Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 11th, 2024. Let's get into it. So, uh, as I promised yesterday, I, I will put up the video. I imagine it will get censored on YouTube. Um, now, you can watch it on Rumble at The Burn, The Burn on Rumble. And, uh, of course, uh, I, 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 I'm still working on an Odyssey channel. <laughs> that ain't going too well. Uh, but anyway, uh, I so want to continue with the voting theme. Here is Douglas McGregor. 198 House members voted against the SAVE Act, which will require proof of citizenship to vote. Are you paying attention? Do you see what the Democrats are doing? The Marxist, communist, uh, Democrats, the warmongering Democrats are doing to try to, to influence our elections? Do you understand why I'm completely against the Democrat Party? Uh, now, there are Republicans that uh, everybody says, oh, Kirk, you know, the Uniparty, that cybersecurity guy, what the hell? I mean, you all talk about the Democrats. Yeah, the Democrats are pure evil, man. All right. So I promised that I would put up this video. We'll see what happens. It's going to go up on, I'm putting it up on X at, at that CyberSec guy, at that CyberSec, that T H A T C Y B E R S E C guy on, on X. You can watch it there uh, because it's, it's not that graphic. Uh, there, there are a lot of graphic videos of what's taking place with the Israeli genocide that's taking place in Gaza. And I've talked about this on numerous occasions, and in yesterday's video, I, I told you that uh, you know we just came out with a new figure of 186,000 dead Palestinians, and I think it's it's much more than that. Probably upwards of a, a million people have been genocide, and uh, and the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, are all for this. Don't tell me these people aren't evil, man. Anyway. Uh, so let's let's watch that video and uh, and we'll just that's it. I mean I, that's all I got for today. Peace out. Stay free. Health officials in the territory estimate the number of those children who had their uh, limbs amputated at about two thousand. This is a very uh, local estimate. That's because of the. Israeli war against the Islamist Hamas party in Gaza that has been ongoing since October 7 of last year. Now we are at the Al-Aqsa Mautas Hospital in the middle town of Deir al-Balah in middle Gaza Strip, which absorbs the large number of those children and other casualties in the territory. More than 10 pediatric or child was amputated daily in hospitals of Gaza. This is Sumaya, 10 years old. She, I remember her uh, when she came to the emergency department and then immediately uh, take her to emergency to theater room because uh, she had an explosive injury. Firstly, my uncle's home was bombed causing the death of my girl cousins, Jenna and Sama. Then they bombed a building nearby and I was injured in a home next to it. Israelis should stop the war so I can go abroad to get an artificial limb and then pursue my education. I dream of becoming a design engineer. A new journey of medication and rehabilitation is waiting for those children and many others who had their limbs amputated uh, during this war uh, uh, here in the, at the Al-Aqsa Hospital or other hospitals in the Gaza Strip. The a new process of rehabilitation that they will be, embark, be embarking on is the, is the rehabilitation in terms of the, of the limbs, artificial limbs, that all of these people might in need, might be in need for Rami El Mirari, RT, Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital, middle of the Gaza Strip.
A Russian airstrike on the village of Matveyevka in the Zaporozhye region successfully destroyed a warehouse with munitions for the HIMARS rocket artillery and missile system. The warehouse reportedly contained both rocket artillery and ATACMS short-range ballistic missiles, both of which can be launched by the system. The targeting of another ammunition and military equipment stockpile was reported shortly afterwards in the nearby Kamenoi settlement. Both strikes were first reported on June 29th. Ukrainian forces have increasingly struggled to use precision-guided assets against Russian frontline positions due to effective use of electronic warfare to jam their guidance systems, which appears to have increased their propensity to use systems such as ATACMS for strikes on strategic fixed targets deeper behind Russian lines which lack comparable protection to frontline forces. A notable example was an ATACMS missile strike on the NIP-16 deep space communication site in Batino on the Crimean Peninsula in the final week of June, and a strike on a Crimean beach shortly afterwards that caused significant civilian casualties. Use of these systems has been very heavily facilitated by the presence of American military advisors on the ground and by access to a network of hundreds of NATO satellites which provide targeting data among other roles. On April this year, the U.S. provided Ukraine with powerful long-range ballistic missiles for the first time earlier April, and its military has already used them twice in the last week against Russian forces, according to three U.S. officials. The first strike was about 100 miles inside Crimea's border on the morning of April 17th, targeting a Russian military airfield, according to the officials. The Ukrainian military used the U.S.-provided Army Tactical Missile System, known as ATACMS, for the second time Tuesday night, targeting Russian forces east of the southeastern Ukrainian town of Berdyansk in Zaporizhia Oblast, officials said. The Biden administration has not previously acknowledged sending ATACMS to Ukraine, but a National Security Council spokesperson confirmed that the U.S. has provided them. They were part of the $300 million military aid package unveiled March 12. The NSC spokesperson said the administration did not reveal at the time that it was sending Ukraine the long-range missiles for operational security reasons. President Joe Biden directed his national security team to send the ATACMS to Ukraine secretly, the spokesperson said. The powerful missiles have a range up to 300 kilometers, about 187 miles, and allow Ukraine to strike the Russian military throughout Crimea and in occupied parts of eastern Ukraine that have been difficult to reach. The U.S. provided ATACMS included both warheads with cluster munitions and with unitary blast fragmentation. The revelation that Ukraine has used the long-range ATACMS came as Biden signed into law a foreign aid package providing billions of dollars in weapons and support to Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. The measure, which will provide about $61 billion for Ukraine, was hung up for months due to opposition in the Republican-led House. The Biden administration was already preparing a military aid package for Ukraine worth more than $1 billion, according to two U.S. officials familiar with the planning. It will include a range of equipment that the U.S. has already provided Ukraine, including ammunition, stinger missiles, artillery rounds, infantry fighting vehicles and other military equipment, the officials said. 
NBC News was first to report in February that the Biden administration was planning to provide ATACMS to Ukraine. Late last year, the U.S. began to supply Ukraine with the missiles, but until now they had limited the shipments to older medium-range models amid concerns that taking the longer-range ones from U.S. stockpiles could endanger military readiness. In early February, the U.S. Army presented a plan to buy new ATACMS directly from industry and send ones in storage to Ukraine, and the Biden administration approved. The White House also concealed the decision to send the medium-range ATACMS in 2023, acknowledging it only after Ukraine used them in combat. Administration officials also cited operational security as the reason for its secrecy. The Biden administration had resisted sending the long-range missiles over the past two years because officials worried Ukraine would use them to strike inside Crimea or Russia and prompt Russian President Vladimir Putin to escalate the conflict. White House and Pentagon officials have expressed similar concerns about other sophisticated weapons systems but have repeatedly decided to provide them to Ukraine. But after multiple warnings to Russia not to use long-range weapons inside Ukraine and to stop attacking Ukrainian energy grids went unheeded, the White House decided to give Ukraine the same capabilities. An NSC spokesperson said Biden directed his team to send the ATACMS after North Korea provided Russia with ballistic missiles that have now been used in Ukraine and after Russia has repeatedly attacked civilian infrastructure inside Ukraine. The U.S. imposed limitations on the use of the long-range systems, including that they cannot be used to strike inside Russia and must be used within sovereign Ukrainian territory, which, according to the U.S. government, includes Crimea. Testifying before the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense last week, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin warned that without funding for more weapons to Ukraine, Russia is gaining the upper hand. We're seeing the Ukrainians be challenged in terms of holding the line. They're doing a very good job, a credible job. But in order to continue to do that, they're going to need the right materials, the right munitions, the weapons to be able to do that, Austin said. An NSC spokesperson said more military aid will provide a boost to Ukraine on the battlefield, but it cannot turn the tide of the war alone. Ukraine is running low on munitions and equipment, while Russia continues to launch waves of drones and missiles, the spokesperson said. Speaking on NBC News, Meet the Press, on Sunday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the new aid will give the country a chance at victory as it defends itself from Russia. I think this support will really strengthen the armed forces, I pray, and we will have a chance at victory if Ukraine really gets the weapons system, which we need so much, which thousands of soldiers need so much," he said. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.